Mr. Chairman, I thank you very much for holding this hearing. Uh, it's a welcome relief from the series of climate change hearings that we've been having. Don't worry, there'll be more. Okay. <laughs> However, today's hearing title, just look at that title. It suggests that we're likely to hear some very misleading narratives about tax relief enacted into law since 2001. So I think I can speak with some expertise because I was uh, Senate author of at least two major bipartisan tax relief measures. So I would like to set a few things straight. First, the last time that we had a balanced budget, and you remember those years, 97, 98, 99, 2000, revenues were 18.9% of gross national product. Last year, uh, federal revenues were 19.6 of GDP. That's the fourth, fourth highest level on record. Yet last year's deficit, even with the highest percentage of GDP coming in in taxes, still came in at a whopping $1.4 trillion. The problem isn't tax cuts, as we all know, but the problem is unchecked spending. Over the next decade, spending is projected to average 24.1% 20 of economy, a level previously reserved for either wars or recessions. Even if we manage to sustain revenues at their historic peaks, look what's happened. Two trillion dollar deficits would still become a norm within the matter of years. Now evidently, this is okay to the other side of the aisle, but it happens to be very much a moral issue. Whether this generation lives high on the hog, and lets our children pay for it. That's not a very responsible thing to do. Second, if Democrats are concerned about tax cuts for the rich and corporations, they ought to reconsider the ones that they enacted last year in the so-called Inflation Reduction Act, which isn't reducing inflation at all, so I like to refer to it as the Inflation Enhancement Act. And that's CBO saying it's not going to reduce the uh, inflation. Those partisan tax increases, or those, uh, uh, those are subsidies, but they're tax subsidies, are now expected to cost hundreds of billions, if not trillions of dollars, more than we were told when the bill passed. And they disproportionately benefit large corporations, and wealthy investors. So, who just gave billions of tax benefits to the rich that they're now complaining about? Well, we know the answer. That was a partisan approach. So Democrats and President Biden hope, take responsibility for that. Now, isn't that rich? Third, the past 20 years of Republican-led tax cuts have benefited Americans across the board. And low to middle-income Americans have seen their tax burdens reduced the most. Now, according to the nonpartisan, now let me emphasize, nonpartisan Congressional Budget Office, the bottom 20 percent of households have seen their average federal tax rate slashed from 7 point. 7.2% in 2000 to only 1.5% in 2019. In contrast, the top 1% have seen theirs drop 2 percentage points from 32 to 30. So we have made the tax code more progressive, not less. I say we because in these cases, Many of my friends across the aisle supported most of the tax relief measures enacted in the law. So I just need to remind this generation of Democrats 
The Bush-Obama tax cuts were bipartisan. Democrats in both the House and Senate voted to enact them. Democrats voted to extend them. And not that long ago, a majority of Democrats voted to make most of them permanent. Now, have Democrats moved so far to the left that now they're having second thoughts about the last 23 years of mostly bipartisan tax relief? Do Democrats want to repeal these changes and send us to last century's tax code? Now, if Democrats want to do that, what happens? Doing that means raising the lowest marginal tax rate from 10% to 15%. It means slashing the child tax credit, which Democrats say they support. That would be reduced from $2,000 per child to 500. It also means subjecting an ever-increasing share of families to the alternative minimum tax, and we know how terrible that tax policy is, not just from its justification, but because of the uh, complications of it. The Nonpartisan Tax Foundation estimates taking tax rates and the child tax credit back to pre-2001 levels would disproportionately hit low and middle income Americans. Now, I've been on this Senate Budget Committee for my entire life in the United States Senate of 42 years. And before this committee started focusing almost totally on climate change, it heard regular warnings from the CBO and other nonpartisan experts about the long-term debt problems facing our nation. That was the case even when budgets were temporarily in surplus. The Biden administration has made our structural deficits worse, thanks to the president's poor fiscal stewardship. CBO tells us deficits through 2031 will be six and one tenth trillion higher than what the agency expected when he took office. Last week, CBO, nonpartisan, I want to emphasize, put out their latest budget outlook and the Government Accountability Office, which I don't think has a partisan twin tinge, released their annual report on the nation's fiscal health. If this committee is interested in examining our rising debt, we ought to bring in these nonpartisan heads of these agencies to give us the straight facts. Let's put aside all these issues we're talking about that don't have anything to do about the fiscal health of our nation, and I know our chairman has emphasized this very closely connected, have, we need to have a serious discussion about these fiscal problems. So I welcome all of you who are here today. I look forward to hearing each of your testimonies. Thank you, Mr. Chair.